morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice the radio. So today, I want to talk about a topic that has been on my mind for the past few days, and that is, are we going to be getting an Eevee Heroes 2? Now, a couple of points before we get rolling here. Firstly, I think there is an excellent chance we get an Eevee Heroes 2. Not that they'll call it Eevee Heroes 2, but you know what I mean. I think we're probably getting one at some point in the not-too-distant future. And secondly, there's no news about this. There's no trademark. There's no listings over in Japan. I'm not saying it's happening in the next five minutes, but I do think there is a decent chance it's coming. And what got me thinking about this was this tease that was sent out by Pokemon in advance of Pokemon Day this year. Because you see... This had a bunch of cards with which we're rather familiar. I showed you this the other day. Obviously, we've got the Charizard EX from Obsidian Flames. We've got the Poor Me Illustration Rare from Powerday and Fates. We've got the Pikachu from 151. But there are some other cards on there. Now, what's really interesting is it's got the Blood Moon Ursa Luna from the upcoming Crimson Haze expansion. And the reason why that's interesting is because this was sent out by the English armor Pokemon as well as the Japanese arm. So they showed us this card, and, and generally speaking, right? Japan reveals Japanese cards. And TPCI, the, the English-speaking side of the company, they ignore the Japanese reveals completely. You'll notice at the World Championships, there is an English stream and a Japanese stream. On the Japanese stream, they had a bunch of reveals. I was on the English stream, and I'm sad to say we, we did not have a bunch of reveals. It was a little bit sad. Although I understand that it happens, and I understand why it happens. So the fact that that was kind of shown off by the official Twitter of the English-speaking Pokemon world, that was very interesting. But not as interesting as some of the other cards. They showed us Ogre Pond EX, which is not... E that's not even from Crimson Haze, to be clear. That's from the set after Crimson Haze. That's from... And again, this hasn't been revealed, but we do know this from listings, etc. That's from Mask of Change, the upcoming set. So, it's really interesting that these cards got revealed. And they're very much hinting at future cards from future sets. Not even hinting. Showing us future cards from future sets. The thing is... It also showed us a new Eevee. Now, this was interesting, of course, because you look at, you know, the other unrevealed cards. Terra Greninja, Terra Ogapom, Blood Moon Ursa Luna. The unrevealed cards on this image were all super exciting cards. And then there was this Eevee. And look, I know Eevee is ridiculously popular, one of the most popular Pokemon. Uh, you know, I was walking my kids to school today and my daughter got really excited because the kid walking in front of us had an Eevee backpack. Eevee is a big deal. But it's still interesting that they showed this random, probably common basic, given that they were showing off a bunch of unrevealed cards that was super exciting. And that got me thinking about whether we could have an Eevee Heroes 2. So what's the argument? Well, Eevee Heroes was ridiculously popular. And I mean ridiculously ridiculously popular it sold out in japan ridiculously quickly it was very hard to find in japan and it got reprinted for a while because it was ridiculously popular it came over here as evolving skies and i don't need to tell you that evolving skies is the number one set i mean i would say in the sword and shield block but honestly that doesn't really cut it I mean, it is the number one set in the Sword and Shield block. Sure, in that set of 12 sets, it is the number one. But that really doesn't sum it up well enough, frankly. It's the best set we've had in many, many years. And look, part of it was the fancy alternate art. Now, this was the set that brought us EVVs and VMAXs. Like Leafeon, as an example. I'm not going to list them all out. That would be weird. But as well as that, we also got... The illustration rare, or it's not illustration rare as they were, it's alternate arts. But you know what I mean of all of these Pokemon. So we got the Leafeon V 
and the Leafy on V Max. And obviously, the V Maxes here are very big deals. The Moonbrion among them being the biggest. The other two we got in this set was Glaceon and Sylveon. The rest ended up as promos in various ways. The point is that this was a ridiculously popular set. Eevee Heroes in Japan and other Asian territories. And then Evolving Skies over here. And in business, when you make something which is ridiculously popular and sells ridiculously well and everybody loves, it's kind of worth going back to the well and doing it again to make a boatload of money. So, yeah, part of this is just going, look, EV Heroes was great, led into Evolving Skies, which was great. Pokemon would be silly not to do this again. But also... We're in Temporal Forces at the moment, or we're leading up to the release of Temporal Forces. And Temporal Forces is going to be Scarlet and Violet 5. In Japan, they're showing us reveals from Crimson Haze. Crimson Haze is going to be in our next set, which is going to be Scarlet and Violet 6. And we know the other half of that is going to be Mask of Change with the Yoga Pond, etc. So we're going to get to Scarlet and Violet 6 without actually getting... The EX EVs. Now, to put that into context, Evolving Skies was number seven. That was Sword and Shield seven. We are getting to the stage where we got the EVs in the last block. And I know some of you might be going, well, hang on a second, Wossy, come on, mate. Do we have to have EV EXs? And the answer is yes, obviously we do. Obviously we do. I mean, let's take Umbreon as an example because everybody loves Umbreon. Obviously, we got Umbreon V and VMAX in Evolving Skies. I just showed you that. But what was the gimmick before that? Oh, that's right. GXs in the Sun and Moon era. Did Umbreon get a GX? Obviously. But it also got a tag team GX. Oh, and before that, we had Big E, Big Xs. Did Umbreon get... Yeah, obviously. Right? You just see where we're going with this. Obviously, Umbreon did. The EVs tend to. And they don't always get them in their own set. Like, Umbreon GX was in Sun and Moon Base. Umbreon EX was in Fates Collide, which is not really an EV set like that. However, Pokemon have basically seen now that making an EV focus set is money. And we know Pokemon like money. Partly they're a profit-making business. All profit-making businesses like money. But secondly, let's not forget the whole Charizard thing. How po Pokemon keep printing Charizard. And if anyone wants to know why keep Pokemon keep printing Charizard, it's not a lack of idea or anything like that. It's because we keep buying it. Why did we get a special illustration red Charizard in Pound A and Fates when we got one pretty recently in Obsidian Flames? And Pokemon 151. Well, go, go look at the prices of the cards in those sets. Go look at the most expensive cards from those sets. There's Charizard across the board. All three sets. Charizard, Charizard, Charizard. Pokemon keep making Charizard because we keep telling them we want Charizard. And we keep telling them that by buying the sets and pumping up the secondary market. And no, Pokemon don't make any money from the secondary market. And Pokemon don't really care about the secondary market like that. But does anyone honestly think Pokemon aren't checking the secondary market and following it to see the trends? Obviously they are. Obviously Pokemon are following the secondary market and looking at it to see the trends and using that to inform their decision making. Pokemon don't really care about the secondary market. They're not going to make their decisions to help or hinder it. They're not going to make money off of it. But they absolutely are going to use it as a source of information and tell them what's going on with their own product. They would be frankly silly not to. They know Charizard sells and they know the Eevee sell. And look, Eevee's always been popular. But I don't think anyone really saw Eevee Heroes and Evolving Skies doing quite as well as they did. And I'm not saying nobody thought those sets would be popular, okay? Everybody knew those sets would be popular. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying that nobody knew they were going to be that popular. That they were going to be good to that extent. Because who could possibly have predicted that? And all this is coming around right now and it's making me think, it's happening ladies and gentlemen. 
It's happening. And again, I'm not saying it's going to happen in the next couple of months. I'm not saying it's going to be the next set or anything like that. I'm saying we are... Well, the set after Temporal Forces will be halfway through the Scarlet and Violet block. Assuming it goes like normal, which is a fair assumption to make. We've been here a while. And we've not had any EVEXs. And in previous blocks, where we've had EVEXs like the um well not ex is necessarily but like umbreon gx in sun and moon like umbreon ex in fates collide pokemon have just slipped them in as and when and not waited that long into the block we don't usually get halfway through the block without the exes or whatever equivalent card we have at that point and i don't know for certain i can't tell you for certain but that tease for the eevee got me thinking we've not had them yet and with EV Heroes being as big as it was, and with everything else going on with the fact that we haven't had them yet, and that's a little bit weird, I'm thinking it might come soon. But for now, we're going to have to wait and see. And for now, I want to hear from you guys. Is this something you would like? How hyped would you be? Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts! Be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about Pokemon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord, and all kinds of fun things. And of course, get shoutouts on the channel, like the lovely Ray of Light, who's been a supporter of ours for a while now and is a very lovely person. So shout out to them for the support and the loveliness. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.